Estonia was relatively successful switching into the distance mode of learning during COVID-19. Almost like we were prepared for it. And when you ask me why, I bring out five reasons. First, uh, we started early. Already at the end of 90s, we consistently invested into digital infrastructure. That was organized under the program called TigerLib at that time. Already by the beginning of 2003, close to 100% of Estonian schools were connected to the internet. One thing we did different from the other countries at the time was that we did not only invest into infrastructure, cable and computers. From the very beginning, uh, we invested also computer skills for teachers and supporting uh, the creating the electronic learning material. Another interesting aspect to note is that although the main funding uh, uh, for TigerLeap came from the central government, financial contributions from school owners or local governments was also a requirement from the very beginning. That created ownership on a local level and thus those new opportunities reached schools all over Estonia. Another interesting bit, yearly budget for TigerLib in those years were comparable to the national IT budget. So we were not really well off, but we followed the vision towards the future. The willingness uh, to invest into the infrastructure is continuing also in our days when government, with the support of EU funding, channels funds uh, to upgrade as local good internet uh, networks, purchasing of devices or creating digital materials, covering all subjects and school levels. Second, I would bring out that supporting the idea of digital government and information society was never only a government agenda. In our journey, private sector organizations have played an important role, either by leading the initiative to establish the IT college to tackle the shortage of IT specialists, or by providing training for close to 20% of general public for overcoming the computer literacy problems among less skilled. There are a number of spokespersons for technology education that have emerged among Skype-related engineers. They have been the constructive partners or fierce critics, if necessary, to advance the technology-related education. Another very important characteristic for our developments has been the network of the education technologists. Created already almost 15 years ago, this is a network of professionals across education levels. They exchange experiences, share best practices. For us, they were the ultimate resource on a national level when COVID-19 broke out. They came to assist other teachers by putting together webinars on topics most urgently needed in a new situation. So there were webinars on how to use Moodle, Microsoft Teams, Google Classroom, different video platforms, electronic assessment options how to lead teams or how to lead learner-led studies, etc. and etc. Altogether, education technologists helped to create close to 80 new webinars that were very keenly followed by students, uh, teachers, headmasters and also parents. And fourth, a few years ago, we set requirements for students' digital competencies on a national level curriculum. Our experience shows that early exposure to technology is the best way to attract talented people to ICT. Activities such as doing something exciting with a computer, solving computer-related problems, or building a computer, developing software, web page, or just breaking the computer, all those make students more familiar with the technology. Currently, almost 90% of education, uh, uh, general education schools and 60% of kindergartens offer some kind of technology-related activities. And about one-third of students in general education are involved in learning more complex ICT skills like programming, robotics, 3D printing and cybersecurity. And uh, lastly, schools get practical support from national level. In HITSA, we bring together bottom-up grassroots level needs assessment and this is combined on a national level strategic coordination of activities. We act as a central platform for cooperation for different stakeholders, 
training for teachers, school leaders, foresight activities, supporting technological innovation on the school level and provision of e-services for schools. This is where we put our focus on a national level. Given that Estonian schools are very autonomous, different schools can find services suitable for their specific situation, they can follow their own path and pace. So Estonia serves as an example where strategic efforts to develop digital skills is done by cooperation of different stakeholders. From the very early stages of digitalization, TigerLib wasn't only the initiative to provide schools with computers and the internet, it was a much larger effort. Uh, the term TigerLib, by the way, is still used often today, but it's no longer associated only with education. It has evolved into broader metaphors that reflect forward-looking vision and aspiration for the society to, to look into unknown. And our secret has been that we always followed it up with practical action plans. A success factor of e-Estonia is interoperability of information systems. State provides e-services that are able to securely communicate with each other and the data can be used cross-functionally via data highway called X-Road. In interoperability is also supported by the concept of state main registers that are established by the law for the most important tasks of the state. It means that we have nationally agreed where certain type of data is collected and stored and other stakeholders can ask necessary data if needed. For example, all our personal data is held in population register, or company's information is a part of business register. Education uh, information system, one of the main registers as well, was established in 2004, and it contains data from nearly 2,000 institutions, including kindergartens to higher education institutions and it has approximately 50 X-Road live services open. On the one hand, this kind of distributed architecture has definitely its own challenges. How to endure the continuous operation of many uh, solutions together, both from private and public sector providers. On the other hand, it has positive influence to the seamless service provision. For example, it enables better risk mitigation and easier adoption of new features and solutions. Due to the many alternatives available, teachers and students, and even sometimes together with their parents, could find the best suitable option depending on available resources and skills during the COVID-19. What we saw in past few weeks, sooner or later, every teacher found their toolbox of e-solutions and nobody were left behind. In addition to wide choices of e-solutions and secure infrastructure, the content is also extremely important. Because most of the cases inefficient business processes or incomplete content cannot be fixed with a superb technology. By early 2000, Estonia decided to move on to develop digital resources for online teaching and learning. As a part of Estonian goal to develop digital resources covering the full general education curricula, by the end of 2020. Estonian law has required all new hard copy textbooks and workbooks to be made available in digital form since uh, 2015. The primary source of digital resources in Estonia is eSchoolBag, a na nationwide online library of more than 20,000 educational resources that everyone can access free of charge. Teachers, universities and private publishers can all add resources to eSchoolBag and the subject experts are responsible for reviewing the quality of them. The digital resources are searchable by curriculum subject and grade level as well as by other elements of the national curriculum, such as key competencies or cross-curricular themes. Thus, the state guarantees digital learning resources. This includes ensuring that every student has access to personal digital device to access the modern digital infrastructure. No 
service stands alone. Amazing results are achieved in cooperation. What made us successful as a team who endures educational e-services? Great professionalism and supportive organization culture for sure. All employees knew their responsibilities and roles, but were also ready to contribute to other topics when and where needed. Our competences and agile mindset were the foundation for the quick mobilization to any questions that came up. I believe about half of the HITSAS team was involved from the moment of the idea of compulsory distance learning in early March. Even if our solutions were not 100% ready, the user felt that they are not alone. It was possible thanks to the fast information sharing in both ways inside the organization as well as outside, with the schools, educational technologists, teachers, students and their parents. Everyone had an opportunity to stay informed and contribute by offering ideas and solutions that could help. And last but not least, intense work and extra working hours requires ongoing feedback and recognitions to stay motivated and move forward. Especially if you don't know how long it takes to get back to the normal conditions. Management tr trustworthiness and publicly given positive feedback made us keep on going. Let's build the future together. Building up digital society like Estonia today is a non-stop process, with a strong leadership, amazing people and supportive organization culture.